The Rebel by Bernard Gilbert, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. The Rebel. I live in music, in poetry, and in the life reflective. I seek intellectual boldness in man. I worship mental swiftness in women. I have no love for lawyers, priests, schoolmasters, or any dogmatic men. I am poor against rich labor against employer women against men i fight beside all strikers mutineers and rebels i welcome foes i desire criticism i loathe prejudice either social or national i repudiate all claims i demand freedom of action and leisure for reflection facing death i would say i have tasted all tried all dared all suffered all and i repent nothing end of poem this recording is in the public domain song of revolt by bernard gilbert read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk crowns are a shake the princes and the kings are bending low and round the world before the blast of freedom thrones are hurled the people are awake over the ark of tyranny the red flag flaunts abroad for all to see whilst to the roll of drums swelling triumphantly the glad cry comes the people shall be free in dungeons men long bound for freedom's sake forgotten of god deep frozen by despair hear with surprise that clangorous fanfare the people are awake our fathers heard the call when liberty from her bonds like the angry sea pouring mightily forth slew tyranny and singing the marseillaise bad crowns to fall that all men should be free men shall be slaves no more from sea to sea that word of hope unspeakable succor brings the day dawneth when there are no more kings and the people the people shall be free and a poem this recording is in the public domain there ain't no god by bernard gilbert read for librivox.org by glennie junkin 212 2017 st charles missouri there ain't no god cause if there were my boy what's under foreign sod would be alive and here instead of which young william porter what never listed when he order has his farm and bronges yonder safe away from harm poor lad he went i can't forget that night while porter laughed him out of sight now he is spent porter's all right what does he care he's thinking of another farm instead of laying in some ditch he's rich and folks'll gallop at his nod i say it dost hear me thou there ain't no god end of poem this recording is in the public domain the night is dark by bernard gilbert Read for LibriVox.org by Bruce Kachuk. Safe guarded dwellers in your sea girt airy, how fares the fight? Terror has crept beneath your ocean wall, horror is overreaching to appall. Your sons are menaced by a furnace fiery. What of the night? a hundred years have passed at ease since last you fought on bended knees and joints unused grow stiff and old 
and hearts unroused are faint and cold whilst they who own but wealth their creed stand helpless in the hour of need o peace-bound nation lapped in rich sloth untroubled generation know you that races change some dwindle slowly downward in decay unconscious till the dawning of the day at touch of fire we learn how they are faring thrice welcome is the test to nations daring to some how strange our ancient enemy now brother from one napoleon to another has seen his country ebb and flow and now he holds the sternest foe learning the lesson of strenuous fight to brace defensive armor tight but what of you old islanders so roughly woke has gilded sloth mid dreamless calm stifled your soul close wrapped from harm in neptune's cloak or is it but an idle dress thrown off at breath of fearful stress or has it slowly strangled that old oak none may foretell but this we know as fire testeth iron through and through so shall it be with you not yet have you passed furnace wise but soon with newly opened eyes upon your knees you shall discern heaven's judgment on an age-long ease poets and prophets darkly sang unheeded then the tocsin rang but now the sky is gray and dim your enemy is stern and grim your leaders slow and though you realize it not you may lie low for though to fight one son is bold another hides amassing gold the strain falls not in equal measure whilst some lie cold others distil their blood for treasure and that old england if unchecked shall see your ancient empire wrecked you battle not to vanquish a great nation nor for safety nor the sceptre of the seas nor for the empire of a world at ease nor fame's fair scroll for your salvation you wrestle with apollyon for your soul and if you fail your epitaph too late the angel with the pen shall grave your fate your glorious history of no avail whilst all the earth shall know you were not great not arms nor weapons forged nor serried forces nor stout allies nor multiplied resources the victory giveth not ships afar nor numbers gradual tale nor all your might o britain shall avail only the spirit liveth yet this our hope a hope unsaid and still our faith though faith be dead that as of old you may awake cast off your senile mood and shake irresolution to the wall bid equal sacrifice from all that each surrender to the state a measured offering to fate till unity of will controlled shines through the nation manifold then should your spirit conquer as before and phoenix like you should renew your youth and strength once more End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
return by bernard gilbert read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk from exile and disaster from banishment set free we shall return in sorrow our homes once more to see the storm will surely finish the day must dawn at last the floods at length diminish the bitterness be past from fatherland long banished o church in ruins low o roofs and chimneys vanished tis to our homes we go the land is torn asunder the orchard trees are bare a muttering of thunder still shakes the heavy air yet life goes on undaunted with aching hearts and sore to raise our hearts and altars we shall return once more End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Nietzsche by Bernard Gilbert, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Nietzsche. In the silence of the night time startled, we can hear a murmur as if someone tapping, tapping, tapping at the breasts of idols with an auscultating hammer sounding all their hollow vitals as they helplessly endeavor to evade with vain pretenses or a tone yes we hear the distant thunder of an earthquake that convulses poor old mother earth is shaken sorely tried and whirled asunder shaken by a fierce invader where grim and slow you creep below digging 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 deep troglodyte untiring miner all alone as you climb upon the mountains glaciers icy precipices toward the lonely lightning blasted peak that towers above in silence plunging into deep crevices where the frozen water falls monotone and at last we wake from nightmare wake to find ourselves denuded naked lonesome mid our fellows lacking father wife or mother lacking neighbor child or brother all disown still our eyes are fixed steadfastly where you soar above the heavens spurning with your mighty pinions countless deities and angels shattering our fondest visions with your own ever on your knees you creep where the way is wild and steep digging 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 deep whilst the priests and idols weep end of poem this recording is in the public domain sacrament by bernard gilbert read for LibriVox.org by eva davis beloved mine we cannot falter now no threats avail no claims affect this hour that kiss far more than sacerdotal vow or golden circlet making truly one more solemn than any oath hath passed our lips whilst love the great compeller the mighty power in his bewildering hand hath seized us both no pardon comes for those who wrongly read the books on stone engraved our primal laws or fail to satisfy the unchanging cause who reach this height and fail are dead indeed their being void their souls are cast without and from the book their names are blotted out there is no holding back no base endeavor the cup of true communion is filled the sacrament prepared 
as we have willed hand joined to hand in clasp that none can sever our quittance sure our resolution taken with vows fulfilled we face the world unshaken and each to each we pledge ourselves for ever end of poem this recording is in the public domain Fighting Tomlinson by Bernard Gilbert, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. Fighting Tomlinson. I sit by the chimney corner. My blood is running slow. My hands is white as a printed page. Who at once were red with a fighter's wage. They withered and wrinkled now with old age, and the fires burning low once i could leather any one and strike a knock-down blow my legs were limic as a young bough they could race or dance or follow the plough but they're crookled and wemblin always now and the fire's burnin low i remember me of owden days at metheringham show i fought young jolland for a scarf i nearly broke his back in half he galloped home to Blankney Barf as hard as he could go. I fought and danced and carried on, razzling high and low. I drank as long as I could see, it made no difference to me. I wore a match for any three, tis sixty years ago. They called me Fighton Tomlinson, my name is Thomas Tau. I were the champion or the sheer, if any foreigner come near, I never shirked nor felt nor fear, I allers at a go. On every night a Saturday, no matter rain nor snow, we gathered in the market places and stripped stark naked to our waists, gave one another bloody faces, a Sunday morning show i fought at all the country fairs from partney down to stowe they called me nubbutter billinghay rough i never not when i'd had enough for i were made o the proper stuff i'd like to have you know ay them were roguish times my word tis sixty years ago our heads were hard our hearts as well i wonder as we never fell into the burning pit of hell where dreadful fires glow i used to hit like this but now i cannot strike a blow my battle's nearly lost or won my poor old limbs is almost done the tears is dropping one by one and the fires burning low end of poem this recording is in the public domain. The Laborer's Hymn by Bernard Gilbert, read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis. We have slaved for you long days and nights of bent and weary lives, giving the strength of our muscles, our sweat, and our sons and wives, with less food than your horses and homes less warm than your hives we have ploughed and dug and sowed and reaped the seasons through and through we have gathered in your grain and raised the harvest home for you who gave starvation pay to us and kept us from our due we asked for land and freedom the right to till our own to harvest and to garner for ourselves what we had sown we sought the fruit of our labor. You granted us a stone. Who gave our lives to your children? Who pledged our souls to thine? Who made you lord and master, and placed us with the kind? Who gave you leave to drink our sweat and mix our blood with wine? To save the land for your children, who denied their country's wage, our sons have left their homes to fight, to guard your heritage when they return ah woe to you before their righteous rage you held the land in sufferance to answer for your right 
to cherish those beneath you and lead them into fight you have refused all payment and trampled in your might our sons shall trample you and yours in their bloody and righteous rage who hid at home in shelter whilst they paid for the land its wage they fought and died for the land and they shall enter their heritage end of poem this recording is in the public domain oliver cromwell by bernard gilbert read for librivox dot org by eva davis a group of men stood watching round the bed gazing in sadness at the lion's head ugly and massive coarse yet noble too transfigured by the power shining through the steadfast purpose the unflinching will decisive swift to save alive or kill as was required ay and more was there the tenderness the pity all the care of one who watches o'er his fatherland and bears upon his countenance the brand of deep unutterable sorrow burned into his soul whilst he the lesson learned that they who wield responsibility alas must always compromising be and to help on the cause they deem divine must waver from their ever rigid line the singleness of heart for which they pray doth bow before expediency each day no longer fate allows the choice between a good or evil course with answer clean but rather shews two evils to be done and they must boldly choose the lesser one tis this that makes him groan with agony the searching question is it well with me the question that at last must come to all when at their end they wonderingly recall this point or that one was i justified for there i stepped out of my way for pride and there i stooped perhaps to save a friend or pity swayed me overmuch to bend from justice there yes i have always sinned weak weak have pity on him now the valley of the shadow dews his brow then in a half delirium he saw a vivid pageant passing through the door of all the deeds that he had ever done good or bad judgments battles lost or won there in procession wide all who had died under his rule either by civil law or by the swifter penalty of war passed mournfully their faces ghastly pale their gaping wounds accusingly did rail and last of all stately refined and meek the martyr king the obstinate and weak the strangest mixture england ever saw upon her throne and yet poor man he wore his crown with piteous regal dignity whilst from his hands there slowly dripped the blood of countless thousands who in loyalty perished beneath his vacillating mood then from those twitching lips there fell again have i done well the agonizing pain was clear to those around his bed and one answered astonished with beseeching tone but surely general you have done well you over all of us have done most well but cromwell with a twisted smile replied no as he fought for breath i only tried then closed his eyes smiled quietly and died End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Anywhere But Here by Bernard Gilbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Ellery Davidson. Anywhere But Here, Ned, 
any bloomin' hole. Golly, if it ain't like tearin' body from your soul. War's a bloomin' sight too wearin'. Home for William Toll. Once I used to think our village took the prize for dead. Now I know it wore a paradise around me, Ed. Don't I wish as I could see it? Just a minute. Ned! Did I ever cuss my luck for comin' for the bench, doin' what I did for poachin', arter this old trench would be like a holiday at seaside with a wench? This is hell, boy, don't forget it. Hell without the fun. Let me see a plow again, and you can have my gun. You'll hear me shout across the sea when this damn war is done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The East Wind by Bernard Gilbert Read for LibriVox.org by Ellery Davidson The spring was mild, the air was warm, all green the things upon the farm. The corn put forth its tender sprout, the daffodils came bursting out. Above the hedge in skimming flight, the blackbird hardly touched the light. Whilst in the meadows lush and green, the lambs and foals at play were seen. When suddenly the wind turned round, and blew across from dead man's ground, where Farmer Rogers caught his wife, and killed her with a carving knife. The oldest laborers about, who read the weather inside out, say when it comes from out that quarter, you know it's nothing else but slaughter. For when it blows from there by night, it fills the animals with fright, and when it blows from there by day, it drives your happiness away. It nips the fruit, it starves the corn, and everything that's newly born. It sweeps the land with icy breath and strikes all growing things with death. The farmer feels his liver growl and soon his children start to howl, until they wonder why the weather can fill a man with crazy blether. He kicks his dog, then rushes out to sack his foreman with a shout, growls at his wife and scolds his daughter because the ducks have left the water. He sees the rack upon the wing and feels his life a wasted thing. The laborers, with wrinkled faces, are keeping in the shady places, afraid of wind and master too, and very careful what they do. Down in the fields, with backs all hunched, the horses and the cattle, bunched, stand by the hedge to miss the blast that wails and whines and whistles past. Their coats are ruffled wrong way round because it blows off dead man's ground. Their tails are down, their eyes are dull, and quiet is the angry bull. But yet the sky is bright and blue, with everything of clearest hue. The wolds are close enough to feel, their trees and houses cut in steel. The sun is tempting with a smile, the wind is slaying with a knife. It aggravated Roger's bile, he killed himself upon his wife. It kills the young, it kills the old, it fells the timid with the bold. Swift as a flash, hard as a stone, sharp as a flint, dry as a bone, it pierces you without a sound, the blast that comes from dead man's ground. For when the wind is in the east, it's neither fit for man nor beast. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Peter Ray by Bernard Gilbert Read for LibriVox.org by Ellery Davidson No more I hear the waters roar, Roused at the coming of the boar. No more the river turns again To sweep across the level fen. No more the winds in fury ride along the marshes wild and wide. Afore the rising of the tide, the waters roam no more. No more I wade along the fen for heron or for water hen, nor hug the bottom of my boat, as to the feeding ducks I'd float, nor ambushed lay with roving eye to watch like specks again the sky, the wild geese circling on high. The waters roam no more. No more I creep nor crouch and run, nor trail my old long-barreled gun, nor listen how the water laps about my sunken fish and traps. Tis eighty years sin, as a boy, I first helped at the duck decoy, and now I know but little joy, 
the waters roam no more. My father knew the hidden ways across the waste and marshy maze. He knew each haunt of bird and fish and how to find him at his wish. While well, sometimes in his punt he'd sing until the reedy dikes had rang, but now's the end of everything. The waters roam no more. When, on a stormy winter's night, there stirs a noise or sudden light, I lay and pant to hear him shout in panic, cause the waters out. For long I look, and anxious strain, alas, my hope is all or vain, and, sad, I go to sleep again, the waters roam no more. No more the waters roam the land, but hid away on every hand are led in channels to the sea, instead of flowing fancy free, instead of roaring fierce and wild the same as when I were a child, they creep imprisoned and defiled, the waters roam no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O Fools by Bernard Gilbert Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson O fools who plough with hunger faint, Who reap the harvest lacking grain, O sheep who offer no complaint, O worms who dare not turn again. The farmer leads the best of lives, his food pours in, abundant feast, full fed upon your sweat he thrives, and you, and you are but a beast. Each day you tend the growing corn, the ox shall not be muzzled, true, all animals must have their turn, but less than any beast are you. The horse is stabled dry and warm, his food is measured manger full. The sheep is valued on the farm, a price is found for meat and wool. You, you are but a working man. Your wages run from day to day. Your wife and brood live as they can. They count for no return of pay. Old age creeps o'er your wrinkled face. Your shoulders droop toward the soil. When faltering, you leave the race. Your workhouse well repays your toil. O oh, piteous soul, with none to care. At length they recognize your worth, and England yields herself your share, a pauper grave in Mother Earth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Elfin Dancer by Bernard Gilbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Ellery Davidson. Beneath unfathomable seas, deeper than dreams, sounder than sleep, beyond the magic of the trees, where never light nor gladness gleams, where neither life nor love can glow, there you lie low. Frozen, encased in crystal shape, enwrapped, enmeshed by claws that gape, and not until you start from sleep may you be drawn from cavern deep and never till the earth has quaked can you from fairy trance be waked you dance you dance on tiptoe up from the grave of withered fears the earth wind rushing in your ears spirit of joy and youth most fair crowned by your wonder loosened hair you dance you dance on tiptoe the grass just bending at your feet the earth untouched as fairy fleet onward you go Upward you flow, up through the leaves of spiral flame, a tongue of fire with arrow aim, whose mystic essence interblending flows in a torrent never ending. Through that strange tree whose blossoms pale wreath, lily like, a bridal veil, mysterious tree whose knotted base scarce bears the ardor of your chase, emerging thence by rapture swayed you rise from leafy ambuscade poised in the ether to and fro one moment hesitating so flashing from elfin eyes one glance still on tiptoe you dance you dance o oh, earthborn spirit swift wonder child of flame the essence of your being dull human eyes unseeing can never hope to tame you may be worshipped from afar by faith, by hope, we see the star from whence you came. Fleet as the wind amongst the hills, 
your spirit listeth as it wills o pagan huntress chaste and wild you dwell amongst us undefiled but if we falter at your door at one false step your shrine before one discord note one word awry you vanish straight from human eye the earth unfolds herself to seize your laughter echoes in the trees and you are known no more end of poem this recording is in the public domain a g webster by bernard gilbert read for LibriVox.org by bruce kachuk painter rebel and lover of music like old sebastian bach who went alone working unnoticed with a single aim he lived and moved amongst you all unknown you gave him neither honor nor civic fame no freedom of your city crowned his head no recognition of his genius came but citizens of lincoln i tell you that your greatest citizen is dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain to be home by bernard gilbert recorded for librivox.org by jude oh to be home now that the autumn's coming where the clover's nodding and the bees are humming where the sun is scorching over fields of hay and the country's ready for the harvest day where the bullocks stand knee deep in meadows browsing or underneath the shady trees are drowsing where the corn is turning colour fit to reap and in the sun the horses lie asleep oh to be home now that the harvest's ready now the hay is gathered and the weather's steady now the reaper sails across the fields are flying and the barley white as driven snow is dying when overhead the harvest moon rides full and daybreak brings a touch of frosty wool while stackyards clear are ready for their turn and farmers smile across the level hern oh to be home now that the winter's nigh and swifts by millions flit about the sky when thatchers all get busy with their pegs and horses out at grass can stretch their legs when inns at night are full of tired men who've had a bumping harvest in the fen tis then tis then none but a fool would roam tis then tis then i wish i were at home end of poem this recording is in the public domain Give Soldiers a Vote by Bernard Gilbert, recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. Give soldiers a vote? Don't talk so blame silly. They've gone to the war to beat Kaiser Billy. Until that be done, there's plenty of fun. The war may be pressing, but politics first? Let's keep up the game, though the heavens should burst then we're sure of our pay till the very last day great scott don't you see how we stand on the brink give soldiers a vote they would say what they think and from power and pay we should rapidly sink so don't talk about it don't mention it now let the men go to war and the women to plough we statesmen will govern the lord he knows how. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
Alone by Bernard Gilbert, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. How now, my heart, at this most fell crossroad, the night far darker than a pit surrounds, and only by the lightning's fitful stroke canst see the perils that beset thy course. Too clear they loom on searing eyeballs flashed, certain thy fate whatever twist or turn deep tolls a bell beneath the tempest's roar and soon thy long-drawn struggle will be done thou art too steeped in artifice old heart so cunning that thou hardly art discerned in caverns never touched by light of day thou stirrest unbeknown at first as lusty as any pliant sapling in the spring soon as the lonely bull's dark hide art hard and bitter weathered by the storms cross-grained bewildered thy courage slowly failing thou standest here forlorn dismayed alone thy years have passed away in that great search the quest that bruises hearts on hardest stone seeking a refuge from dread loneliness some haven where the soul is not bereaved too often my heart hast thou been sorely bruised and now at last the truth confronts thy gaze declared by flashing against the pitiless night the soul must die as it hath lived alone alone the shuddering echo dies away no subterfuge no shelter is there ever there is no anodyne for weary hearts for him who stands alone at this crossroad, the only hope is death. From nothingness to nothingness thou passest. As thou wert born, as thou hast lived, so shalt thou die. Death is the only refuge. At his visage all other spectres flee. Remorse that teareth like the undying worm, and failure that sheeted gibberer his brother, who like two hounds have haunted thy abode must vanish at his touch and soon thy journey done thy trouble over wrapped in the mantle of forgetfulness thou shalt sleep well end of poem this recording is in the public domain flesh of our flesh by bernard gilbert Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson There is but one irrevocable bond, heart of my heart. None other counteth here. All claims beside must fail, however fond. But this is surety never to be broken by us, beloved. The eternal token of love made manifest beyond our fear. Of sweetest, deepest draught, the living bowl. Although remorse should tear our hearts in twain, the world to part us rages now in vain, and life new-born through life doth bind us ever. Strange incarnation, out of each made whole, no prayer avails, no penances can sever. The Holy Ghost, the Spirit, releaseth never when flesh and blood and spirit beget a soul. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. This Town is Hell by Bernard Gilbert Read for LibriVox.org by Ellery Davidson This town is hell, and all the people in it Are devils roasting for their sins like cinders. They've train and tram instead of lark and linnet. For sun are lamps, for sky are only windows. They have no air to breathe, no room to rove and crowd so closely that you cannot move, robbing each other whilst nobody hinders. In towns there is no providence above. If providence there is above this city, the fog and smoke must cover it from pity, for folk are crazed and run instead of walking, to catch they know not what, all nonsense talking. Old farm, old farm, I wish I hadn't left you, and if my time came back, I wouldn't part. 
you gave me pleasant thoughts to dwell upon and peaceful days and quietness of heart for here no happiness can come at all the nights are cursed by idle folk at play here is no sleepy smell of new-mown hay or soothing noise of cattle in their stall no scent of may in bloom or beans in flower no drowsy sound of bees among the clover but only hooters droning every hour with smoke and dirt and misery all over sometimes when dazed by this unhuman place i have remembered me the days so dear and seen again the horses out at plough their shoulders pressing forward in the gear the smell the sound come back with strange surprise to think that i am down long martin fen it brings the tears into my aching eyes to dream that i am farming once again end of poem this recording is in the public domain timberland bells by bernard gilbert read for LibriVox.org by ellery davidson I used to hear them faintly, those evening bells for prayer across the fields of Tilney, beyond the sunset's glare. I heard them in my childhood, those bells of Timberland, when I was always happy, holding my father's hand. Enchanted in the distance, they rode upon the air, seeming to float from heaven, I knew not how nor where. All through life's dusty pathway I heard those bells ring out a chiming in the distance that sung my path about. My father, how I miss him, lies in the churchyard there. He takes my hand no longer. He knows not how I fare. But I would give up everything to hold again his hand and hear across the meadows the bells of Timberland. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Dame Peach by Bernard Gilbert, read for LibriVox.org by Ellery Davidson. Old Dame Peach stuck like a leech to any good bargain what fell in her reach. She'd never let slip what come in her grip, however they turned, she was ready for each. She'd strip herself bare or sell you her hair, or put up a price for her best china wear. Her very own bed in which she was wed would be yours in a second, if only you dare. Of childer she'd lots, and would lend you their cots, and although you'd have backed her to lose in a race, yet at business she shone when the others were done, and nobody ever could stand in her place. Among all the men she took care of hers in, and was never alarmed at the roughest of tricks. She'd sit in a bar, sup an ale from a jar, till a bargain was driven, her profit to fix. Folk knew her all round, and none ever was found, but at one time or other had met her somehow a good stand-up fight it was all her delight she would get up at midnight to sell you a cow she bested the men what came out of the fen and the folk from the wold they found theirsens sold while them from the heath they was allers beneath for however they tried they was out in the cold the top of the tree was our mrs p at swapping a horse or a cargo of tea she'd purchase old wicks or a truckload of bricks or a house full of furniture just for a spree though she's mounted on high somewhere up in the sky wherever she is there is business ahead but i wish she was back when we'd have a real crack on the friends that are gone and the days that are fled when her shop was a store and a thousand things more with her busy in gathering all she could reach a jewel a treasure a caution a pleasure oh sadly we miss her our old mrs peach end of poem this recording is in the public domain Friends by Bernard Gilbert, recorded for LibriVox.org by Jude. Years ago, simply ages, I don't know how the deuce they go, like turning pages. We're still friends at any rate, nothing can invalidate the fun we had, good or bad, always together, not caring whether earthquake or thunder over or under joy in each heart singing like thrushes young in bushes 
now we're apart. I've never been so happy since then. They talk of the love of women and men. It's not half so true as that of friends. Not passionate, not selfish, never ends. Not our fault to be forced away. Destiny came, a wedge. We could not turn its edge. And so it fell upon that bitter day. We might have had such times, but no, no, it wouldn't go. And after that, twas never the same. I can't encompass it by rhymes, halting and tame. There it lies, not to be altered by tears or sighs. We meet stealing eyes on the door with banished feeling, but no more. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Charing Cross, 1916, by Bernard Gilbert, recorded for LibriVox.org, by Jude. Round Charing Cross in Carrion Row, the crowd press in, a sight to see. Their mouths agape, their eyes aglow, with morbid curiosity. Those twisted limbs, those bandaged faces, humanity all broken down. The ghostly grim procession races, hell's handicraft in London town. The bestial throng with pampered eyes, faces of goat or sheep or bull, all greedy with a glad surprise of ghoulish horror drinking full. Heroic citizens, well nourished, who feast your eyes, what sight to see? By you the Colosseum flourished, you thronged, as now, round Calvary. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Love Not Too Much by Bernard Gilbert, read for LibriVox.org by Caroline. Love Not Too Much Have you too greatly loved? Sister, take warning. Once let your soul be moved, sable your mourning. If he be satiate, then an ingratiate waiteth till the dawning shew not the passion that stirs in your veins far more alluring to handle the reins his love ensuring in masculine fashion if certain he wanes he the pursuer must ever press on passionate wooer whilst you are a stone show but a touch yet never too much and the battle is won man is a monster made to be stroked close then your arms cover your charms great the enticement of beauties when hidden of passion well cloaked crazed he shall plead for what you yield gladly fierce are his greed for what you give madly you may have measure of love's burning pleasure and still hold your treasure sister take heed End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Niccolo Machiavelli by Bernard Gilbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Niccolo Machiavelli. From thy serene abode, thou lookest down with pitying eye upon a rabble rout who strive and plot and fight and turn about endeavouring to seize some phantom crown whether of kingdom or of some small town or village or one single home their own they stumble and with hurried steps awry blindly they miss their opportunity whilst all the time thy golden book is there ripe with earth's wisdom but they only stare or pass along with stupid scoff and curse, Using thy name for scoundrelly or worse. 
of all those who have striven to endow the world with garnered knowledge only thou hast for so long endured of thorns the crown beneath the feet of swine thy name is thrown and in the streets thy priceless wit doth lie so that alone the stooping passer-by undaunted by an epithet may find and treasuring like gold seven times refined open the casket with exultant air to see the pearl of wisdom lying there end of poem this recording is in the public domain remorse by bernard gilbert read for librivox dot org by larry wilson pierce you another pleasure bent or wound the helpless innocent the holy ghost shall not relent beyond the tortured body's cry dread is the mind's dull misery remorse the worm that can never die oh to repay it judas saith who robs the innocent of breath certain shall live to welcome death end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Mandrake's Horrid Scream by Bernard Gilbert, read for LibriVox.org by Carolyn. The Mandrake's Horrid Scream. Why ain't the master back? Down these out fence, there ain't no neighbors, and when he's finished with his labors, he gallops off full crack. I sits alone and shakes with fear, while he be rousin' at the deer them what's in town has never tried to live alone all terrified they talk about churchyards at night or things with chains dressed up in white why bless my soul i'd gladly sleep in any place that made them creep cause allers they've a friend about to hear if they should give a shout they dunno know what it is to fear but here what's that only the cat and she's as black as death's own self she squats all loathly on yon shelf wi one unwinkin eye on me i wish the devil no not he i didn't mean to mention names nor interfere wi others games they say as cats is really witches like betty williamson now dead that us to wear her husband's breeches and ate the queerest food folks said she sat beside her open door wi' one foot allus off the floor quietly knitting one eye cast to overlook you as you passed and just the same yon nasty critter stares at me now that soft and bitter oh dear i wish my man would came may ache twist and strike him dumb may fairies nip his liver out and leave him ne'er a tongue to shout forsaking me all lonesome here with everything what's wrong and queer from out my window where i sit i see the willows round yon pit dark pit where Moller holmes was found as some said accidental drowned but i hear its screech and terrified about the time he must a died having no bottom so they say its dreadful secrets there must stay until the resurrection day oh where the devil is that tom i'll give him pub when he gets home the wind is moanin round that pit as if somebody wished to flit there's things in there what stirs by night and if you see your hair turns white around they say the mandrake grows what's pulled at dead of night by those who little care although it screams to wake poor mortals from their dreams our parson tells of powers evil and providence can't beat the devil where should they lie but in yon pit what makes me squirrel to think of it all gashly arms are reachin out to clamber up your water sprout and reach you through o oh, lor what's that tis something coming i hear it humming my 
dear good tom thank god it's him i was afraid of something grim i've been a wanting you so long you lousy mawkin stinking strong of beer and bacca off to bed i'll learn yer thomas who you've wed for morn you'll wish as you was dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain one day by bernard gilbert read for librivox dot org by larry wilson i read you poems all the day and all the night i dreamed of you wild nightmares riding sweet sleep through whilst all the time i longed to say more tenderly more roundelay and ardently with verse to woo i read you poems all the day you gave them up again to me for all the night i seemed to see your face a vision on my way as with the murmuring of streams your voice commingled in my dreams i read you poems all the day ah would that you could hear me now accepting the unuttered vow my spirit yearned but dare not say yet still though you are far away i read you poems all the day End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. No Wife by Bernard Gilbert. Read for LibriVox.org by Glennie Junkin. February 2017. St. Charles, Missouri. Tom! Tom! What you think? I've ed the parson's wife the first time in her life across our door. What for? what for why tom you'd never never guess not if you lived as old as grammar bess what's lately swore she's a hunter and four she wants us two to go off and get spliced oh christ what's got her now the cow you well may swear cause ow she dare and why will make you swear again or laugh surely just light your pipe now you look comfortable so you're rough old tom i know black as a crow but i'm fond on your lad as any fool could see and whether we're good or bad you've been main good to me but blast her silly eyes what yer say to her then i said a lot i tell her what a comin here with a fancy airs er uh, what's never know no cares lookin that wise just cause she catched a parson and no great shakes either she note of a feather while her half-brother run away to sea and took to blue water with their old cook's daughter you talk of sin and shame i says to me you talks just like a fool or a silly bairn at school cause nobody about could doubt but what were happy together him and me just look i says at any in the street what couple can you find about to beat my tom and me what's been together years happy and comfortable never no serious trouble nothing i mean to set us by the ears good reason why i says says i cause we're a free and equal pair we got to treat each other fair or else we part well said now missus that were smart to part says she looking all down her nose how could you leave your home with children three i says says i that don't bother me cause i can earn enough for food and clothes i can maintain em by my sense says i and would at any time o day i'm not a slave and anyway i'd manage if i ed to do i'm not a slave i said like you you didn't come i did i did i meant it too if your man turns up stunt says i you can't go off or let him fly you can't maintain your son not you lettin alone the bairns you ain't that made her squirm all down her back how could you walk up on a stack or yoke a horse or bake or wish if your man drinks or starts to thresh you couldn't leave him cause he holds yer you're tied by laws and friends what scold yer yer ain't like me as free as air i'm not afraid whoever stare neither is tom we mind ourzins and thinks no more of folks than hens cause if i don't behave mysen or him we parts why don't we why because we're free and happy here because we treats each other fair 
You give her the rough of your tongue, old gal, but what a sell. Coming here to ride rough shod cause she's a wife. Why, bless my life, she doesn't know she's born. She couldn't find her own corn. I sent her off with a flea in her ear, and will again if she does come near, but she went. That white-faced critter, with a nose like a knife, and a smile that bit her as if she would kill a wife. What does she know of life? Note, no ever will. But tomorrow's Sunday, and we'll go to church. What? Yes, just for once, and sit together like birds of a feather. We ain't ashamed to show our faces to them what thinks we be disgraces. We'll go a together, Tom, for sure. We'll go a this once, and then no a more, if you be willing. Aye, lass, I'm willing. I'll back you up, as I've allers done. Again, Parson's wife or anyone. Aye, again all the country round, cause you're as good as could be found. And now, old gal, it's almost eight. Come on. You know we won't be late. Off to the ship for a glass of ale. This yarn of yourn'll make a tale. What's that? Your bonnet? All right. Be quick. I'll wait for you again the gate. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To an Old Friend by Bernard Gilbert Read for LibriVox.org by Eva Davis a tongue of lambent living flame stirs lightly when i hear your name your features delicate and rare quiver with every thought you bear it ever was a strange delight to see your charming face alight to sit with you a while apart and hear the beating of your heart or watch the message from your brain into your eyes then back again and still it is my fairest dream that delicate ethereal gleam the fire that played behind your face lighting it with such fairy grace such intuition sweet and wild why should you always be a child you cannot ever hope to grow into a woman, oh, dear, no. The fairies never would allow such desecration, so that now you must be reconciled to stay forever as you are today. What an enchanting fate is this, eternally a child to be, laughing with that untroubled bliss that only haunts the fancy free yes yours is happiness indeed barefoot to roam the woodland vale all careless though your feet should bleed because you hear the nightingale all heedless though the thorns should tear and though the pain be fierce and wild for nature gives to you her kiss and you will always be her child end of poem this recording is in the public domain is it finished by bernard gilbert read for librivox dot org by larry wilson well is it finished is the long day dream done the battle lost and won has love at length diminished and night begun do you pass to another yet still i hold devotion all untold although you mate a brother and leave me cold my heart beats but for thee and every thought is thine as flowers to the sun incline for once thou lovest me and all was mine though destiny may banish my heart is still the same and thine is all my fame although thy love may vanish true burns my flame and thou mayest know that shouldst thou call to me wherever i may be like arrow from its bow straight i will fly to thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain oh lincoln city of my dreams by bernard gilbert read for librivox.org by bruce kachuk
as far away as childhood seems thou standest on thy roman hill and memory holds thee frozen still engraved on steel where moonlight streams for leagues along the landscape mild thy towers twin the scene command embattlements of fairyland romance incarnate to a child though other cities cast a spell ever thou hold'st my heart in chains and still i hear across the plains at midnight stroke that ancient bell whose giant throbbing scarcely seems a mortal sound at heaven's gate it echoes round the exile's fate o lincoln city of my dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain the fool by bernard gilbert read for LibriVox.org. what say tharp yes aaron tharp lived there not quite sharp not quite i fear twere very sad though there were some at tis hard to say but he come to his end and went away he'd a nice little place as his father made all gone to pot i be much afraid old aaron built it in his day a worthy feller true and sound respected by the country round to think as his name should be forgotten if he'd known what a fool he had begotten he toiled and moiled into his grave to leave a lad what couldn't save no a note of grace no a sense of cash he lost his all be being rash and for what for what to play the fiddle hey diddle diddle to make up tunes in his empty head and ruin his eyes with the books he read he roamed and babbled all day long about the way to sing a song followed the lads at plough about to hear him sing would make him shout he'd sit on the bar of the ship at night to catch the tunes was his delight or to play the fiddle about the town and all the while his trade went down that trade what poor old air intended it's fell to naught and can't be mended cause businesses is all the same you've simply got to play the game with all your soul and all your heart or else you'll soon be in the cart he was encouraged by our parson twere wrong of parson it's very well for them to talk to sing and play and idle walk but aren't they paid for doing that they mind their bread is buttered fat parsons is sensible you see a most as cute as lawyers be not quite a course cause no one could but very nigh just as they should parsons is sound at heart i say they never quarrels with their pay so it were wrong of parson there cause aaron no but lacked a cheer he made his tunes he played about and none but parson had a doubt what he was bound for poor young lad a course i'll own though he were mad them tunes he played them songs he sung they minded you of being young they took me back a boy again at work with father down the fen when all the birds they used to sing at sunrise till the air would ring and sheep and cows would stir about with everything to make your shout yes it were strange what he could do his fiddle seemed to mazzle you the laborers would catch a song and they was catchy all along they sing em yet and georgie bell he plays em by the village well but all the while trade didn't mend until at last there come the end they selled him up lock stock and stone and off he went alone because he sung but couldn't save i think his father in the grave must sure have stirred however deep that smash would waken any sleep young aaron went i don't know where they say he's gone to manchester and there mayhap mid soot and smoke makes music for the city folk plays on his fiddle time again them tunes he learned down martin fen from shepherds or from wagon boys or men at plough or any noise he made his tunes out of the air from birds or beasts he didn't care and parson says he'll make a name our parson what's the one to blame as if he ever could again find such a home as martin fen as if he could by fiddle fad get half the name his father had lost in some smoky town he plays and thinks i lay on sunny days of all the things what makes life dear like beans and bacon cheese and beer a dreamy good-for-nothing lad sure bound to lose all what he had he might a riz and come to be as high as you or even me and been well known the country round as comfortable warm and sound his name is known for many a mile it raises far and wide a smile while folk they whisper not right sharp a fool a fool were aaron tharp 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. End of Rebel Verses by Bernard Gilbert